What's up everybody, Howie Spangler here, and this one has spoilers, so if you haven't played this game yet, don't watch it anymore. I'm about to spoil it up, here we go. 72 saves and 25 hours later, I finally finished my first run of Resident Evil 4 Remake, and I have to say, Hell yes, this game is so good. Not without its quirks, but we'll get to that in a few minutes. It's taken me two weeks to finish with being a dad and finishing my band's new album. Oh, by the way, if you wanna see a fun beach rock version of Blink-182's Damn It, watch this video right here to see what my band Ballyhoo did with it. Uh, I think it's pretty fun. In 2005, Capcom dropped a literal game changer in Resident Evil 4. This was a game that elevated the survival horror genre to be more immersive and more intense. It introduced the over the shoulder point of view, which was a stark contrast to the fixed cameras, tank controls, the pre-rendered backgrounds of the original RE games before it. I know there's some purists out there that may not have liked that change, but no matter how you felt about it, that game sold incredibly well and inspired many horror games in years to come. Though Resident Evil 5 and 6, uh, I, unplayable to me, I can't do it, I can't do it. Now it's 2023 and Capcom is currently enjoying the success of the remakes of all those original RE titles. Rebuilding them from the ground up in the RE engine, complete with modern controls, a way better camera system, and setting a whole new tone that makes these games even scarier and creepier and darker than the originals. I'm saying it right now, Resident Evil 4 Remake is better than the original. The original's still good, but this is just better than the original. I'm just so happy with it. I went back and played the original recently to get hyped up for this one, and I couldn't do it. The camera, the controls, it all felt so clunky. Um, the whole vibe of it just wasn't dark enough, you know, to, to today's standards. I've become accustomed to the way modern games play, and it's just hard to go back. Uh, the way they built out the lore um, of the parasites and the village people uh, and Sadler's followers is so satisfying. There's a ton of backstory and files that you'll find like all through the game. Exploration. Exploration has leveled up. Uh, there are so many places to explore now. They expanded on many of the locations from the original, added a ton of Easter eggs, literally eggs, and fun treasures to collect. Seriously, you can find eggs in the early hours of the game. You can either eat them to get some health back or humiliate your foes by just throwing an egg right in their face. Seriously, you can do that. I found the gameplay in the standard mode to be very balanced. I'm someone who appreciates a challenge, but I don't want to be uh, frustrated and stressed out trying to make my way through the game. Dead Space Remake is a good example of that. I found myself inching through that game, constantly being attacked and killed, feeling like my character doesn't have enough ammo or the right combat moves to get out of a situation, which I understand it is survival horror, but Dead Space Remake was a frustrating experience for me uh, and I actually stopped playing it. I want to enjoy the game and be able to play all the way through it, and not get like super mad and stressed out. The whole reason I play video games is to relieve stress, take my mind off of things for a little bit, you know? RE4 Remake reminds me of Uncharted 4, actually. One of my favorite games. Uh, lots of exploration, beautiful graphics, um, fun mechanics. The voice acting is some of the best in the series. Shout out to all you Ada haters. I really like Ada's voice in this. I don't know what the big deal is. To me, she sounds like a badass. She's like as if like secret agent work is just a walk in the park for her. If anything, Krauser's voice didn't work for me. It just didn't, I don't know what it was. It wasn't deep enough or I don't know what it was. It just, the voice just didn't work for me, I don't know. But I didn't go online and complain about it. To me, the hardest boss fights were actually uh, Ramon and um, Verdugo. The final fight with Sadler isn't that bad, honestly. The cabin was pretty rough, it took me like four or five times to beat that one, I think. And the catapult scene at the castle gates, <laughs> Took me a few tries on that one as well. Uh, I've also started my new game plus and trying to find all the treasure I missed on the first run, as well as the uh, Castellian uh, wind-up dolls. Only four left. I realized I totally missed that sacrificial spot uh, near the lake settlement on the first run. You have to go back there when you get the boat and the insignia key. And once you get up there, uh, there's, a, there's a Castellian doll um, over by the fence. You have to go, th you have to shoot through the fence. You'll see in there on the ground. It's kind of hard to find. They're all kind of hard to find. You're like driving yourself crazy with the spatial audio. Like, like it's over here. Like I know it's over here. I turn over here and it's like, it, it goes away. It's clearly over here. And you're just like, what the fuck? Where is it? The ammo you find feels like just enough. The focus on inventory management on this one is huge. You'll definitely find yourself in situations where you're down to a few bullets and you're all out of grenades after a boss fight. There are spots where you get attacked by hordes of villagers or Sadler followers. We have to get smart and use environmental objects like exploding barrels or those candles that dangle from the ceiling, you know, to start a fire and drop on a big group of them in an effort to just conserve ammo. 
Uh, crafting is a mechanic that I usually don't really care for, especially when it gets too detailed. Looking at you, Breath of the Wild, but it's not too bad here. I got pretty used to it in Village. Basic crafting, it's not that hard, it's fine. The weapon upgrades with the merchant uh, feel pretty balanced along the way. Some of that shit gets real pricey. I do wish you could unlock unlimited durability on the combat knife after the first run. I get why they did that. It might make the difficulty curve a little bit easier, um, but it just takes me back to Breath of the Wild again with, with weapons that break. Really? The Master Sword? The Master Sword gets tired and needs to rest for a little bit? It's the Master Sword, bro. Really? Ashley is less annoying. Still annoying, but less annoying. Her AI works a lot better. I actually find myself happy at the different parts of the game where they take her. I get to go solo again on a couple chapters. Feels nice, nice and quiet. But I do like how their relationship evolves uh, throughout the game. Okay, let's talk about some things I didn't like as much. These aren't that big a deal though. It's just, they were just a little annoying to me. I don't know. Let me know in the comments if you felt the same. I feel like some of Leon's animations are too slow at times. Uh, like the way he reacts to walking into fire, for example. Um, it takes him too long to compose himself, especially when you're in an intense battle with enemies, with flame arrows and, and plagas walking around, whipping around their gross tails, hitting you in the face. I wish you could dodge. Uh, the parry is cool and it's very useful. Um, I'm still not good at it though. I'm on my second run, I'm still trying. I'm on like chapter four or five and I'm still trying to figure out the parry when the right time to do it. Being able to dodge or juke or even slide around or under enemies would be cool. Um, and I don't think it would, you know, affect the difficulty curve too much. It would just be something cool to like, a few more moves that he would have for in the combat so to be able to get away. Um, I have seen other YouTubers showing that you can literally crouch when, uh, when a Ganado lunges at you, you can actually like crouch down and he'll miss you completely. Tried it though, it didn't work for me. <laughs> he got me. Uh, why so many fucking bear traps? <sighs> they are everywhere in the early hours of the game. You're just moving right along. You're looking for a key or something. You find yourself caught in a fucking bear trap. <sighs> they don't really do that much damage, which is great. Uh, thank you developers for that. Cause that, that's, they're already super annoying, let alone taking a bunch of HP. The laser sight is pretty weak to be honest. Um, sometimes it's hard to see and I wasted a lot of ammo like trying to shoot a, a torch or a stick of dynamite out of somebody's hand. Or if I'm trying to conserve rifle ammo and I'm trying to, I'm trying to hit something like a, a blue medallion in the distance and it just completely misses. I waste four bullets trying to hit those. I wish you could drop every item into storage. It's cool they don't have storage boxes, whatever, it's fine. I'm sure it's just to make inventory management just more tricky, that's all. And then something that I thought while playing chapter nine, I think it was, um, uh, Ashley's chapter. It was cool, it was creepy, but I know I'm not gonna want to play that every time I do a run. It's mostly puzzle-based, um, and, and you're trying to avoid being seen or attacked by uh, these armored plagas walking around. Creepily, too, those things, are, those things are definitely creepy. But it reminds me of having to play the dollhouse escape room in Village. Um, it was cool the first and second time, but then it just feels like work. It just felt like something I needed to get out of the way um, just to get back to the real gameplay, you know? Felt pointless each time I had to do it. I've beaten that game like 10 times, probably, and every time I'm running towards the dollhouse, I'm just like, ugh, get this over with, you know? That's how I feel about Ashley's chapter. I just wanna be able to skip it if I can. I'll be looking that up. I know there's some chapters you can skip in this uh, for speed runs. All those nitpicky things aside, I love this game. You could tell it was handled with care by the developers. It's now moved back to my favorite Resident Evil game of all time. Uh, just as it was in 2005, and uh, followed by Resident Evil 2. I love, RE2 is such a special place in my heart. 10 out of 10, wood plow. Uh, you should absolutely play this game over and over again if you haven't already. Thank you Capcom for remaining faithful to the original while expanding on the world of RE4 in the best way possible. The attention to detail is present, and I'm just so glad you're making these. I would love to see Code Veronica get this treatment next, and I can't wait to see what RE9 looks like. I look forward to many playthroughs of Resident Evil 4 Remake. Well, that's it. If you guys like this video, please hit the like button, subscribe, ring the bell so you know when I go live or upload. I stream every Wednesday night when I'm not on tour. Watch out for my video game streams too. I'm getting back to that. I decided to bring all my nerd stuff back to this channel instead of having two channels. I don't care if my nerd videos don't do as well as my music stuff. This channel is about me and the things that I'm into, so. Follow my band Ballyhoo on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, YouTube, and come see a show. We'd love to rock one for you. Thanks so much, and I'll catch you on the next one. This fucking chair. I realized I was getting lower the whole time during the making of this video. <laughs> time to get a new chair. All right, see you later.